start out today with uh, we're, we're back in we're in the new book starting on page number 83 Rock of Ages when you, when you have it please stand Jesus and his glory. 
page number 329. We have two verses on this as well. We're going to do one and five, and then we'll, we'll fellowship the last part of it. Uh, be one and five. Then fellowship, yeah. Let the music play. Debbie told me, I think Debbie told me last week she wouldn't be here. Uh, she had to be somewhere, so I think that's, that's why she's not here. Yeah, Marilyn and Kathy, I tried to call both yeah. of them this week and didn't get a return call, so just keep them in our prayers. 
It may be somewhere, I'm not sure. Especially pray for the road, because the COVID is running rampant, especially in Russell school system, so. Oh, really? Yeah, in the high school. So if there's, and a lot of people have been circumcised not testing and all that stuff, so. Pray for the children yeah. and the parents, because it doesn't bring it home. Talking to a man last night, Kim and I were. Uh, uh, he's got a son named Philip Means. Is his uh, son's name? It's his name too. But he asked us to pray for him. He's uh, facing some, maybe some jail time and um, some prison time. So he asked us to just have God's will in his life and uh, just ask us to pray for him. So I told him we would. That's awesome. He's Pretty moving. Good. God is moving him quite rapidly. Yes, That's he good. Is. I got a picture of what he was doing his lunch break um, at work. And it was part of his ankle bracelet that he says, I'm out. I have my own, uh, you know, apartment now. Um, he's getting to see Gina almost every Sunday going to his um, games. And um, he's visiting churches on um, Sunday mornings. Now he wants to try and get some on Sunday evening. Progress, not perfection. <laughs> and that will never be Absolutely. until the Lord Absolutely. comes and gets us. Jesus, we come before you in the name of your son, Father, and we thank you for your love toward us. We thank you that the, the news that we're hearing, that is not a surprise to us, because we expect that from a great God who knows all things. And Father, we just thank you this morning. We thank you for giving to us your son, Jesus Christ, who fulfilled all of these things, Lord. And all you're asked of us is we stand and believe on him as being the son of the living God. And so, Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you how you watched over us and all got us all here. And we're standing here, God, waiting on your divine word this morning. Father, we just thank you. We just love you. We just glorify you. Continue to put grace upon those that are holding the hands of those that are going through these times of sickness and disease and such that's going on. Father, we thank you. Spirit of the living God, we welcome you into our service this morning. We feel your holy presence. Now, Lord, we ask a special blessing over the offering for the perfecting of the ministry and the edifying in the saints. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. amen. I've done this song a couple times. It's just, this is one that just continues to keep resonating with me because by no means am I a perfect individual by any means. But, you know, I was, just, I was just telling John, I race on Saturdays. It's something that, that it's, it's not, I've been in motorsports my whole life with my family and everybody, and I got away from that. And I'm, I'm slowly trying to get back to the things that brought me peace and joy years ago because I let so many other things in the world take me away for so long. Now that I'm getting back to the roots of where I was raised and grown and my morals came from, I'm starting to see that peace and that joy within, and I don't want anybody to get in that. That's that's mine. That's between me and God, and that's exactly the way it's going to stay. Because only because of Him, I'm standing here today. Amen. Was the cross meant for me that my Savior carried? Now I've been made free. By the mercy of God, I'm living proof. I 
what the mercy of God can do. If you believe me then, believe me now, he turned my whole life upside down, took the old and remade it new. It's just what the mercy of God can do. Now I'm alive to tell the story how I've overcome. But it's goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. So I'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. It's goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. Now I deserve to be six feet beneath the earth. Got the rest of it. Praise God. Thank you all. Amen. 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 Anybody with a testimony? Prayers of a righteous availeth much because we was praying for that for what two months ago. That's right. Look at that. It's been a long process. Yes, it is. Today is our D day. Oh, that's wonderful. Man. And he held strong do yes. through the process. That's what I was. We were praying. Yes, that's wonderful. Any other testimony? See, I look at things like that. It, we, we always want to, you know, when we when we ask to, to fill our needs and things, we, we ask for this or that. But when I sit back and I see things like that happen, we, we, we tend not to see all the things that he does around us because we take it for granted. But it, when something really big happens, you know. So I sit back and I think of the patience and us praying like that over this period of time is mm -hmm. very well made all that happen, you know. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Be grateful for the things that you can't see. Mm -hmm. Tells me he still has work for you to do down here for him. That's why we're here. Exactly. He ain't done. Amen. He wakes us up every single morning. That's right there is the first. He loves us. We waking up. We don't. We're not promised tomorrow. Amen. It was wonderful this morning. Yep. Wonderful. All right, Pastor Chad. Start with. I try singing again. I've sang it many times. We have never read it. Good morning. Good morning. Anybody else with a song, testimony? You know, Chad, we come in and we praise God through our testimonies and 
we're hearing in First Tabernacle personally, the things that God is doing in right. here and the wonderful blessings that he's doing. And I thought about as you mounted the pulpit, now we enter into the most glorious time of our whole service is to hear God now speak to us. We have sent up our praises and our sacrifices. Now to set and think about that. Though we're absolutely, God is getting ready to break bread through our servant to bring us the bread from heaven to hear the word of God this morning. How glorious. That's what my soul right now, my, my baby's leaping inside because I see now. I see how the Spirit of the Lord is moving this morning, and so I'm like a kid at the end, waiting to hear what the Lord has to say this morning, to correspond with all this that the Holy Spirit is doing this morning in here. I tell you, small in numbers, but great in spirit in Amen. here. Right. Good God. Right. You can't deny Amen. that. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> all right, I'm going I'm to attempt to sing a song here, so... Fire it up, Al. <clears throat> <laughs> children is to I want to see each one of you absolutely and I want to I want to I want to spend time together in heaven uh, we separate down here for a while and we come back together on a couple times a week we'll never have to be a part of there but most of all we'll get to see Christ the one that give us that hope give us that that uh, that assurance that we have a home in heaven and when he's done when he's done with it when he's done with that up there he's coming back to get us down here and that's a, that's what the Bible promises uh, I'm glad of that this morning. <clears throat> All right, turn your Bible to the book of 2 Corinthians, please. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 
2 Corinthians chapter 4. It is good to see everybody here this morning while you're turning there and glad to see that God brought us all back together. And uh, God kept us safe through the week. It was a warm week. Good, though. I, don't, I like that better than the cold. You know, I, I get a lot of arguments from people because they well, I don't know, that's too hot. I said, well, you know, maybe it was hot as you as far as that goes. I said, but I'd rather have that than the than the twenties and thirties. So uh, I'm good with it. <clears throat> but ultimately, God gives us what we need, so we're happy to ha happy to whatever God God brings our way. Second Corinthians chapter four. We're going to read the last verse of chapter four. We're going to read some in verse in chapter five. <clears throat> One thing I always think is interesting in the Word of God, and I've said this before, mankind has broken these up into chapters, but ultimately these weren't broken up into chapters. These were letters. So a lot of these thoughts, as Paul wrote them and, and different writers wrote them, uh, they're not written in chapters. They wouldn't write them in chapters when, when the church of Corinth got these letters. They wasn't, well, here's chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, uh, chapter 4, and chapter 5, and this and that, but it was just a, simply a letter. So when I read, when God gives me a thought and it goes from one chapter to the next, I always think about that. And I was like, you know what, that's, that's kind of interesting to me. We don't we think about it that way most of the time. But in chapter 4, verse 18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. For we know... That if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we would have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. I asked this question maybe a couple weeks ago. I'm not sure when it was. But if I were to ask, have you thought this morning, and I, and I think we pro all probably have this morning actually, about where our eternal destination lies, where we go when this life is over. Um, church mornings are easy to think about that time because that's what we're thinking about. That's, what we're talking about. that's kind of where our minds are going. Uh, on Monday morning when we're headed to work or whatever, we're, all we're thinking about is our destination being where we're going. Um, but a lot of times, uh, God can, God's Holy Spirit can bring to us on a way of each day or we should be thinking about, you know what, this is this is where God has me now, that this is where I'm going to go. Uh, it should be on our minds all the time. <clears throat> but we get easily distracted by life, by work, by different things that happen, the things that were the adventures that we're in in life or whatever, we get distracted by those things and uh, sometimes our real purpose of what we're waiting on uh, or where we're headed kind of gets shoved back to the, to the back aisle. But I was reading a story one time about a, a grandfather that was taking his four-year-old little grandson to the donut shop, wanting to use this as a teaching moment and he, he asked his grandson, he says, which way is heaven? The little boy pointed up towards the top of the truck and he said, well, which way's hell? And he pointed down, pointed down towards the bottom, towards the floor. And Grandpa said, well, well, where are you going? The little boy said, nothing, no nuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we are sometimes, isn't it? We know where heaven is, we know where hell is, where we, we think we, we've got that in our head. But sometimes in life, we think that's we're going to one of those two things. You know, we all we have in our we have our mind. I like to put it this way: we have our mind horizontally. We see things around us, not vertically. We're, our relationship with God is vertical. Our relation, our horizontal relationship, sometimes take precedence over our vertical relationship with God. And sometimes that's not a good thing. Well, that's not a good thing. The trials of life, sometimes the different things we get into. Uh, weighs heavy on our minds and uh, we forget that we have a destination that we're going to but Paul writes here and I like these scriptures in verse 2 of chapter 5 for in this in what 
Well, go back to the first two verses. Why well, look at things are seen or not seen? You know, these things are, are the things which are seen are temporal, the things which are not seen are eternal, what verse 18 says. Then he says in verse 1, for we know. I like those words. I like when Paul uses those words because, because that settles it in our mind. That should settle it in our mind. It was settled in Paul's mind. And if it's settled in Paul's mind, it should be settled in ours. He said, for we know. It's something that we can guarantee. Something that we can take to the bank but more, more secure than anything around us. He says, for we know that if our earthly house be dissolved. In other words, I hear these scriptures all the time at funerals. Be dissolved means that we know what dissolved means. It means to go away. It means to fade out. So if these earthly vessels that we, we, we walk around and be dissolved, be, they fade away, it says we have a building of God. God has another body for us. Aren't you glad of that today? Hallelujah. Did you have any pain this week? Did you have any sickness this week? Did you wake up not feeling good? Did you go to bed not feeling good? Did something in your life not be exactly what you want to be in your body this week? Well, guess what? If you had Christ, you got a new body waiting. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad of that. Amen. This whole body, the older I get, I mean, Cliff was talking about that, the older, the older this body gets, the more it, 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 it hurts. And the more things go wrong with it. I'm glad that it's, he says, for we know that when this body goes away, we have a building of God. And house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. So he says, for in this, in verse 2, for in this we groan. Earnestly desire to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. Now this word groan, it means this, to sigh, to pray, to pray inaudibly with grief. That's an interesting, it's, a, it's an interesting word that he used here. For we grow, in other words, what, it, what he's saying there is because of what we know, because of what we have waiting on us, there is a grieving spirit inside of us that don't feel comfortable here anymore. Lord, and we have a desire to go where we want to go. We have a desire to, to go where we don't see, but we have faith that it's there. So Paul writes and said, our body, in our minds and our bodies, we groan. We desire, we have, a, we have a, 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 an insatiable spirit inside of us that wants to get somewhere where we haven't been yet. Amen. Because we know these old bodies are going to be dissolved. To be clothed in our heavenly existence. It's when we Christians groan for the things of this world. It's when we fall, when we get tangled again. We get tangled up in the bondage of this world. False satisfaction. You know what? Satan will, will be very, he very happily gives us false satisfaction here on this earth. He happily gives that to us because he knows if we can, if he can satisfy us here, then we're not thinking about where we're going. We, see, you know, we, know, that we know what Satan is. We know what he's capable of. He can't take anything away from me. He can't take my salvation. He can't take anything away from me. But if he can make me think about nothing but this earth, then you know what he's done? He's done his job. Because I'm not worshiping God the way I want to worship God, the way I need to be worshiping God. It's funny. Kim didn't know what I was preaching this morning, but we was on the way in this morning. We was talking about dying. And, you know, that may not sound funny to you guys, but you guys think, no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a uh, mortician, but it, it's, it, it was an interesting conversation. She said, are you afraid to die? And I said, no. I'm not in a hurry to die. I'm not like, well, give me, a, put me on the next bus. You know, I want to fight to stay alive. That's right. I, said, well, I said, and I said, well, I remember what I said. Well, it's not the dying that bothers me. It's the how that, I, that, I, that I'm worried about. I, said, I, want, I want to just die in my sleep. Don't that worry you that your wife asked you that too? Well, <laughs> no, no, it really, you know, you know, it's, 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 that is funny, but it don't mind because you know what, if she, if she killed me, then I'm just going to heaven, so you know what, she's trying to do me a favor, you know, you won't know how you get it, well, that's what I say, it's, it's not, the, it's not the dying, it's the how it's going to happen, you know, like I said, I want to die in my sleep, as the old, the old bumper sticker says, I want to die in my sleep, not like the five other people in the car, <laughs> <laughs> He's a, he, the bumper sticker said, I want to die in my sleep. Like my grandpa did, die, die in my sleep. Not like the five other individuals in the car screaming who was with him. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so 
But we have a desire to, to, to be clothed in that earthly, or, or not, to be taken out of this earthly body and put it on our heavenly body. Mm -hmm. Because even that false satisfaction that Satan will get us into, that Satan will convince us that is, that is true and that is right and that it is the way to go, uh, is, is so strong and, and so, uh, so evident sometimes that we, 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 we tend to thank God for things in our life that God had nothing to do with. You ever think about that? I was thinking about, actually, when I was thinking about this, more, I was thinking about Josh, actually. He started racing. He mentioned racing up here, and, and that's what I was thinking about. I was thinking, you know what? I know his desire, I used to race, and his desire is to get, get first place. And I have no doubt that if he ever gets first place, he's going to give God glory. But let me ask you this. If he had to wreck five people to get into first place, do you think God had anything to do with that? No. I, I pray every time I go on the track, and I definitely don't ask him to do that. <laughs> ask him to keep me out of the wall. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah. but the fact is, we see people like that all the time. You know, they 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 pray for a job or they pray for this, and they they'll, they'll walk over twenty people to get this or whatever they want. And they all want to thank God for giving me this. God had nothing to do with that. Yeah, right, right. God had nothing to do with that. Right. Yeah. Don't give God credit for something he's not. He don't want any credit for. No. Mm -hmm. Right. It's when He moves you where you need to be that's when you give God glory. You see what Satan does. What Satan does is, you know what? Focus on this and do however you've got to get horizontally in this life. However you got to do it, go do it. It's a false satisfaction. And it's a false thing that when we say that, when we look at the things of this life, and we see how, how, how we move and we have our being. We think, you know what, God, get me where I need to go. And if you want to bless me while I'm here, fine. But I know that I'm going to be blessed when I leave. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the, with the yoke of bondage. Mm. We're free in Christ. Yeah. I don't want to be wrapped up. I spent too many years of my life being wrapped up in the bondage of this world, being desirous of the things of this world and being desirous of the things that I, that I, that I wanted and what, however I had to get them, I got them. Tell the story. I've told the story a hundred times. I'll tell it a hundred more times because it, because it means so, it's so much to me at the time. There's a friend of mine by the name of Mark Kearns. He wasn't a Christian. Me and him worked together in Columbus. We didn't, you know, we didn't really know each other. He was from Ireton. I was from Ireton, and he was my boss, you know, and different things. And we got to working together. And, and I was a Christian. I was a Christian. I was a very carnal Christian. And my desire in that place where I worked was to get. Through through the step, I wanted to be a boss. I wanted to be I wanted to be somebody in that company, and I did. And I made it all the way. I made it all the way to the the place that I wanted to go. Mark ended up not working there anymore. Years later, we he starts coming to the church that I'm pastoring. We stand on the front steps of the church, and he said he said Chad, he said I want to talk to you about something. We was good buddies, good friends, been been friends for years. I've hunted together and everything. He had never asked me this question. He said, I want to ask you something. He said, remember when we worked together in Columbus? I said, yeah, yeah, absolutely. He said, you were saved back then, right? And I said, yeah, yeah, I've been saved for however long, you know, kind of just, you know, talking to him. And he had, then he asked me this very convicting question. He said, how come you never talked to me about Christ? Mm. Oh, yeah. Talk about. Yeah. Yeah. That hurt. And I thought, you know what? This is why I didn't talk to him about Christ. I was entangled in this earth. I was entangled in the things that I could gain. It wasn't that, and again, it wasn't that I wasn't a Christian. It wasn't that I wasn't going to heaven when his life was over, but my, my thing was I was concerned about anybody else that was going to go to hell standing around me. You see, if Satan can get us to that point, he's tickled to death because we're no longer a witness for Christ. We're a promoter of self. Did we not just talk about that Sunday school? Yeah. Okay, I thought I was listening to the same lesson. That was what we talked about Sunday school. Yeah. I was thinking about when we was going through it. I was like, all right, Lord, you did it again. Yeah. This is good. I'm glad you did it. Promoting self is not the way to go. God will promote us when he needs to promote us, and he will do it in his way. And then again, when, when, when it happens, all right, well, thank you, Lord. All right, let's move on, because I know this is all temporary anyway. What is our groanings? Where are you going? Where are you headed at in this life?
Going to heaven is by God's grace. No other way. We know that. But at least we can get ready to go while we're here. At least we should look like one of his yeah. while we're in this body. While we're in this body that's going to dissolve one day, and you stand over and you look at me in the casket or you look over me in that urn, whatever Kim decides to do with me. <laughs> Come out to the house and look in the ditch or whatever. <laughs> Investigate trying to find me out there. Whenever you find me, as Alan said, you know, she, worry, that, worry me that my wife's talking about de me dying. No, well, I guess it kind of does in, a, in an earthly kind of way. Yeah, I was like, well, you know what? Maybe she's getting ready for something. Oh, well, you ain't afraid then. <laughs> but what? 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 Yeah, I think I switched to mine really quick, though. <laughs> that was just your way to get to that point. <laughs> But when we get when when you stand over my body wherever it is and you say you know what, I want you to be able to look and say at least he did as God wanted him to do. Yeah. Not well he was good at this, he was good at that, or he did this, he did that in his life. Those things really don't matter. Mm -hmm. What really matters at the end is you know what I want them to know that I was a child of God yes, and that I loved the Lord more than anything else in this earth. Yes, Amen. Not just a good person, well he was a good person. Oh, he's a good person. Gave, gave his shirt off his back. Yeah. <clears throat> Couldn't play the guitar, though. <clears throat> That's what my neighbor always said. My neighbor always said, if you can play the guitar and if you can play the guitar and you're a good person, you're a shoe into heaven. That's what he always told me. <laughs> <laughs> I never will forget. I, I just laughed when he told me that because he wasn't a Christian. And he, he, that's how was his thoughts towards Christians. That's exactly what his thoughts was. He had, he had been, uh, been callous so many years that he just... Uh, well, hopefully, we hopefully the years we live beside him, we 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 uh, broke through that ice a little bit. We'll see as time goes by. But you know what? We groan for things of this earth, but God desires we groan for the things that are far beyond. Um, heaven will be worth everything that we. Effort, every effort we put forward down here, heaven will be worth it. I promise you. Do you realize as Christians that this, what we face, what we go through on this earth, this is, this is as bad as it gets. This is as bad as we have to put up with. Because everything is looking up when we get out of here. So you realize that, that no matter what happens on this earth, if this is as bad as we will ever have to face. Remember the old commercials? The old beer commercial? Don't get any better than this. Remember those commercials? You guys are, you guys are older than me. Back in the 80s and 90s, it don't get any better than this. They're all, yeah. <laughs> they're all sitting around the campfire and they're all having beer in their hand, and you know, and this cap says it don't get any better than this. I thought, you know what? You're right. It's about as good as it gets. If that's all your life is. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the alcoholics. And the, I'm not talking about the alcohol being what sends them to hell. But I'm saying what chances are. They probably not going to get up and go to church the next morning. So yeah, you're right. That's as good as it gets right there. Because the future without Christ is hell. So there's a groaning in each one of us. A groaning that we are groaning for. The question is, what are we groaning? What are we looking for? What, 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 ultimately, the question is, where are we going? Where are you going when this life is over, when this earthly body is dissolved, when it dissipates, when it goes away? Where are you going? I'm told that in an Indiana cemetery, there's a tombstone that's over 100 years old. And it had this epitaph on it. Paul Stranger, when you pass by me, as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, so you will be. So prepare for death and follow me. Somebody read that and they, whether it's true or not, this part, I'm not sure. 
They said they read that. Somebody read that. Uh, and I know, I know Pastor By read it. And they took a marker and they run underneath that caption. To follow you, I'm not content until I know which way you went. <laughs> you know, we're going somewhere. Every one of us, everyone sitting in the pew this morning, everybody under the sound of my voice is going somewhere when this body is dissolved. The question I ask is, and the question that, that Paul says is, for we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon the house which we're from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we found be found not naked. Not, not found naked. Paul says this. Paul said, my desire is to put on that earthly, to take off this earthly body and put on that heavenly body. That's the desire that I have. He said, for I, I know this. You know what? It's for sure as I'm standing here in this pulpit this morning, I know that heaven is waiting on me. I know I'm waiting on heaven. And I know that that's going, I know that that's going to happen one day. So am I concerned about my death here? No, I truly am not concerned about my death here. And again, I'm not, I'm not looking for the next bus out of here. But you know what? When it happens, it's going to be the most glorious day I've ever spent on this earth. The Bible says the, the, the day of one's death, the day, the day of one's death is better than one's birth. You know, that's what the scriptures tells us. Because the day of one birth, from that point on, everything goes downhill. But if you're a child of God, the day of your death, that's when everything starts going up. You see, these temporal bodies, this, what we can't get across to the lost people in this world today is this is all temporal things. This is all temporary. Our horizontal outlook on this life, as we look across the landscape, and we see this horizontal uh, picture that we see. We see people trying to grab and trying to trying to claw their way just a little bit farther horizontally. But when it comes to that vertical reach, they, they just simply don't want to reach up because all they see is what's level. And yet their bodies, our bodies, everybody will dissolve one of these days. Everybody's going to die. For it is appointed unto man wants to die. After this, the judgment. Hebrews. Very simply, you're going somewhere. The question is, where are you going? Where are you going on this life? As a Christian, where are we going? Where are we headed to in this life? Are we headed in the right direction? Are we headed in the direction that God would have us to go as one of his children? If we're saved, if we're saved then our, our, our earthly home is already settled. But while we're here, while we're living our life, we're headed somewhere here horizontally. We're headed there. The question is, are we going the direction that God wants us to go? To the lost people, our question would be this. If we're witnessing to the lost, it would be our question. Where are you going to go? You see, Satan's probably going to, going to convince, what do you mean, where, where am I going? I'm going here, I'm going there, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to work, or I'm going to, I'm going to Dunkin' Donuts, as the little boy said. I'm, go, I'm going to all kinds of places. No, God's not concerned about that. Where are you going to go? When this body is dissolved, where are you going to go? Alan said this in Sunday school. You see, on the day of Calvary, the day that Christ died on the cross, from that day on, from that moment on, he secured us to be able to go to heaven when this life is over. He did. He paid our price. He paid the propitiation for our debt, sin. He paid it. And just by simply trusting in that, that, that act of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary secures us to know that, you know what, I know that I'm going to heaven. That's why I can stand confident. Not because I'm a good person. Not because I don't beat my wife and kick my dog and I pay my bills. I don't do any of those things. So I'm a shoe into heaven. You see, that's the world's view. God's view is that they ain't going to get you 10 feet off the ground when rapture happens. When I come to get my people, that ain't going to get you nowhere. My question is, what have you done with my son, Jesus Christ? I will never, dis I will never disservice the, the job that my son did on the cross of Calvary just because you are a good person in the eyes of the world. That means nothing to God. Once we get saved, God will clean us up. God, will, God desires to make us look like, more like him. Absolutely. 
But before that, God's not concerned about how good of a person you are. He simply asks the question, where are you going? If you know, if you realize you're going in the wrong direction, what have you done to change that? And the only way you can't change that is to trust in Christ and his finished work on the cross of Calvary. By doing that, by doing that, then we can say as Paul does, for we know. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, we have a voted of God in a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If you don't have that earnest desire, if you don't have that groaning inside of you to want to be somewhere other than where we are, then I encourage you to trust Christ because he will put that yearning inside of you not to give up, not to give up on life, not to look for the, ne not, not to look for the next bus on the, on the way out of, uh, of earth, but simply, you know what, this is not my home. And I'm traveling through this time, this period of my life until God calls me home. And when God calls me home, then I'll really know what home is all about. 282 County Road 7A is my home here on this earth. That's the place that God's given us to live in, and I thank God for it. But even that is temporary. When it all comes apart, guess what? It's all going to burn. It's all going to fall down. But I have a home in heaven that will never perish. That's the home I'm going to. That's my permanent residence. My residency is already there. I've already got an address in heaven. Thank you. I've already got a residence there. I've already, I've already, I've already got, God has given me everything I need already there, and I'm just waiting to get there. The question is, are you ready? Do you have your home? And if you are, if you do, are you looking more for that than you are for this, for this world? Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we come to you this, this, this morning, God. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for your mercy. God, we pray this morning that we have a groaning for when this body is dissolved, this, this earthly body is dissolved, we pray that each and every one of us sitting here today has a groaning inside of us to be clothed in that earthly body in which you have prepared for us. We no longer have to worry about the pains. We never have to worry about the, 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 the bad things that we got put up with in this earth. It'll all be gone. It won't even be a memory because we'll be living it in perfection. We'll never know and never even understand how bad we had it here on earth because of how good we will have it because of your son, Jesus Christ, and what he did for us on Calvary. I pray that each one of us today know where we're going when this life is over. Pray that we all understand and realize the urgency of knowing where, where, where our soul will be headed to when we take our final breath. If there's anybody that's not prepared to go to heaven when this life is over, I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit would encourage them. And God, trouble their hearts to come to you before it's everlastingly too late. Help us, God, as your people. To get our mind off, to get our eyes off the horizontal relationship that we have around, around us. And we'll focus more on the vertical relationship that we have with you. If we get our vertical relationship with you straightened up, our horizontal relationships take care of themselves. Because you promised you would always watch over us. And you would always give us what we need. And you would always, always take care of us here. Help each one of us, Lord, to put our faith and trust in you. We love you. We praise you. Have your way in each and every heart that's here today. And it's in Christ's wonderful name we pray. And amen. Let's all stand this morning. What is the desire of your hearts? If you have a desire to go to heaven, if you have a desire to go to heaven but you don't have the ability, guess what? There's no ability, amount of ability that you will ever gain here on earth that will get you there. It's all through Jesus Christ. No matter how good people we are, no matter how right we think we may be, as that Pharisee said, I'm glad I'm not like all the others, and I'm glad, I'm glad I'm not like this public and over here. 
What I love about that story is the Bible says the publican wouldn't even lift his eyes towards heaven. He never felt worthy. And all he said was, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. You see, he realized that his verbal relationship wasn't what it needed to be. Pharisee, his, his horizontal relationship was well taken care of. He made, he made that very well known in the scriptures. Made it very well known. I'm, I'm, I know exactly what, who I am, and I know exactly what I've done around me. And yet he was talking to a block wall the whole time because he sure wasn't talking to God. The Bible says that the, the latter was more righteous than the former. In other words, the Pharisee meant nothing to God. The publican said, you know what, that's how it's done right there. We come to God and say, God, I, there's nothing I can give you. There's nothing I can bring. There's nothing, there's nothing I can labor for you and say, look how good of a person I am. And God never expects us to. He just simply said, I want you to trust my son as your Savior. That's all he asks. The Bible says that if we ask, we will receive the blood of Jesus Christ applied to our heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, Wednesday, the teachings of Christ, uh, 6.30 on Wednesday. Come out and be with us, and um, it's going to be another good one. All right, any, any other announcements? It's going to be been a good place to be this morning. Enjoyed every testimony. It was a good, good, quiet spirit here this morning. Amen. Wonderful spirit here this yeah. morning. All right, nothing else? Um, Brother, Brother Allen, would you care to dismiss some word of prayer, please? Father, we thank you for being with us and sending us a word this morning. Father, we just ask that you continue to watch over us as we each go to our respective homes today. Father, just continue to watch over us, continue to be with us until we gather once again in your name. Father, we ask these things in the name of your Son and our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.